Awesome, thank you. Hi, everybody. So what I'm gonna to show today is One Point Perspective. And what One Point Perspective is used for, it's a method of viewing things that are closer to you when they appear larger, and as they go back, they'll get smaller. It's a very basic system of showing perspective. We'll just do simple cubes at the beginning, and then once we feel comfortable with that, we'll do some other things. So the first step is to draw a horizontal line approximately in the middle of your paper, one that goes across, like this one. Then put a dot in the middle, that's called your vanishing point, or your VP. The next step is we're just gonna draw a average regular rectangle below the eye level line, as I'm doing now. Like so. Next, we're going to connect the three closest corners to that dot. So if you have a ruler, we'll put our ruler on the corner. We'll put a ruler on the vanishing point dot and connect it. There's one corner. There's another corner. There's the third corner. Try to make those lines straight if you can. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Pop up on a chat or whatnot. You can communicate with me through chat still. For the next step, I'm going to draw a line just like this line that's horizontal, but up further in between the two lines that we connected to the dot. Next, I'm going to draw a vertical line, a line just like this up and down line connected to the previous line we just drew straight down and as vertical as the edge of your paper is vertical. Then I'm going to erase these lines here. I'm not gonna erase them totally so you can see which lines to erase. I'm just making them dotted lines. But the ones that I've made dotted lines are the ones you're gonna be erasing. I'll just leave them up as dotted lines for a minute so you understand which ones to erase. So those ones that are dotted lines are the ones you're going to erase. And the cool thing about this, she's taping this. So if you want to follow any of the steps later, you know, and you can pause the video and look at it. That's that's the thing you can do. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm gonna to totally erase those connecting lines to show you what it looks like without them. So what's the purpose of this? This is Displaying the view of a box, if it was held below our eye level, if it was below our eye level, at this angle we see part of the top, part of the front, and part of the side.
Now we can make a larger one in front of it in perspective at the correct angle. To do that, we're gonna start out with a very large rectangle, still below the eye level line. And when I draw the connecting lines for this one, I'm gonna make it a different color so you can see them so you don't get confused. Normally you would still do this in your same color pencil and then you would erase it later. But again, I'm gonna switch colors so you can see where the lines are coming from or forming from this box down here. Again, it's the same three closest corners. And then we're gonna connect it directly to the vanishing point. So there's one. There's two. There's three. I'll give you a couple of minutes to get that done. So if we want this box to be in front of the other box, okay, I'm gonna use a different color to show you the ending lines. You would just go ahead and do the horizontal somewhere around here and the vertical, which is the same as this up and down one, around here. Now this box is in front of that box and I would erase my red lines. If you wanna make this box look like it's in front of the other one, but it's somewhat hidden by it. I can pretend that the other blue line is in here, draw it very lightly, you could erase it later. And then do the vertical line here. and erase the connecting lines. Whoops, not those connecting lines, sorry. Erase the connecting lines that are not part of the box. Should be more clear about that. Show the lines that I made red. And now it looks like this box is in front and it's bigger than this one. And also makes it look like this box is kind of on top of the other one, the back end of it about to fall off. Make this darker for you so you can see the first one we drew. Okay, I fix that one. In case any of you are interested in digital art and have tablets at home, I'm using an iPad Pro, and this is a program called Procreate. So I'm drawing directly on the surface of the tablet, just as if I would be drawing on this piece of paper. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because pencil lines are kind of hard to see through a video recording like this. Now let's try a cube above our eye level line and to the right. If it's above our eye level line, eventually we're not going to see the top of the box, but we're going to see the bottom of it because it's above our head. So once again, 
I'm starting with a regular cube, a regular square. And then I'm going to connect the three closest lines of that square to that center dot, the vanishing point. One. Two. Three. Then I'm going to end the box. I'll pick a different color so it's a little bit more obvious. I can make it however long or short I want to make it. I'm going to repeat this vertical line here, down here. I'm going to repeat this horizontal line over here, like this. And now I've got a very long cube. Then eventually I would erase this line, this line, and this line. I'll go ahead and just make it dotted lines at the beginning and not erase it totally so you know which ones that we're going to erase. So dotted lines are lines you're going to erase. Now, here's another fun thing. We don't always have to use rectangles or cubes. We could do this method with a circle or a sphere or a star or any shape, a hexagon, an octagon. A circle is usually one of the fairly easiest ones. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can be an oval. So what I'm going to do, get to change this back to black. I'm going to draw an oval or a circle to the left of my eye level line. Hey, Joni. Elsa? Yes. It looks like one of the participants says um, she can't tell the colors. Oh, okay. They're probably yeah. all dark. Okay, well, then we'll mix the colors and just make it all black. Can she tell where it's dotted? That's a dash line and that's a solid line? Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. So these dashed lines are the ones we will erase. Sorry, you can't tell the color. Probably because the lines are too thin. Okay, now as you do a circle or a sphere, it has no corners, right? So we're just gonna take the outer edges and connect those to the dot. Like so. And because there's no hard edges here, there's not gonna be any hard edges here when we end it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mimic or repeat this curve, kind of like a letter C down here. I'm gonna erase where I put vanishing points so that doesn't get in the way of what we're doing, that little VP thing. Then these are the lines that we would erase. But I made dotted lines. But because this is one point perspective, every shape goes to one point. Sometimes beginners will make like different points and different shapes going to different things, but that's not what we're doing today. And it's good to learn the basics first. Do multi-point perspective is quite complex. We can graduate up to two point or three point or whatever eventually. Mm 
Okay, so I'm going to erase all these connector lines that I don't want. Still keeping my vanishing point. Here's a fun thing we can do with all these shapes. We can make these shapes like a bird's eye view of a city, like we're flying above in an airplane. How do we make these look more like buildings? One thing it would be to do like windows, like in a skyscraper. The way to do that is, again, you draw from the vanishing point and you do vertical lines within the shape. And how do you know what angles to make those lines? You know because they're going straight back to the vanishing point. Do that on the other side of the same shape as well. And when you erase the guidelines, and if you put little slash marks for reflections, that could look like a building like the Federated Building used to be. One that's, it's, it looks like all vertical glass. Now, if you wanted to make them square or rectangular windows, you would draw horizontal lines just like this line goes across and just like this edge of your paper goes across. They should not be slanted or go to the point at all. They should be straight across. And the ones on this plane are going to be straight up and down. If we continue to do that all the way down and make these lines get tighter or closer together as they go down, it's going to look like a building squishing going back in space, like if you were in an airplane. So there's another vertical and a horizontal. They're about the same distance apart. Another vertical and horizontal, still about the same distance apart. Now I'm going to start making them closer together as they go down to the little part of the building. Someone's a little cricket. So here's the, here's the top of your skyscraper. These are the sides where the windows are. And you can make like a little dash line to show reflection if you want to, if we're just doing line drawing. And then eventually you would erase these lines here. That's what I call the connector lines. And you've got a floating building. If you want to get really fancy, you could draw an elevator shaft on the top of the building. That sounds really hard to do, but all you're going to do is just draw a little box like all the other boxes that we've drawn. So I would start out with a regular square on top. Like that, it's just a tiny regular square on top. I'm gonna to make these lines line up with the vanishing point that I'm bringing from the three corners of this tiny square. You just guesstimate or you can use your ruler and connect. It's actually better if you use your ruler and connect, but I'm just gonna guesstimate. Like these are going back to the vanishing point, right? And the same up and down and horizontal to end the square. We could put a tiny little dark space here, tiny little dark rectangle of a line. I almost had to make this black again, whoops. And there is a tiny little elevator shaft on the top of that building where someone could come out and go on the roof. And all it is is the same method we've been using regular square connect the three closest edges to the point the end of vertical and the horizontal and there you go
Now, let's say we want to draw a little tiny door in this one. And we'll say this is like the road. Or one of the roads, the main thoroughfare through the city. Let's say we want to make a door here. Again, we just draw a line from the vanishing point this way. Draw a line from the vanishing point this way. Then draw a line horizontal. There is a door into that building. And erase our connector lines. Okay, I'm gonna walk away from computer just for a second to get yet another tablet so I can watch my time. I'll be right back because I have a clock in here. Be right back. Okay, there we go. Back. Now, what the heck? How the heck will we do this curved thing if we want windows on it? If it's like a curved building, it's pretty cool how it's done. Again, you're going to draw lines from the dot, from the vanishing point. So, think of these lines kind of like spokes on a bicycle wheel. They don't go straight or parallel, they start out kind of closer together and then they get wider as they go out. And that just happens by you putting your drawing instrument on that dot and then drawing a straight line up. See how there's a smaller space here and a larger space there? That automatically gives a perspective, like something is going away from you. If you did shading, like colored pencil shading from dark to light, you would shade darker down here and go lighter as you go up. And that will also give the effect of the feeling that the building is going down away from you. And the little people in the cars would be down here. So it's not very good. Here's a little top of a car. <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. Whoops, like a little fly. That would be the top of a car. Okay, so we're working back on this cylindrical building. Doing the connector lines. Get that darker. From the point. Okay, now once again, since this have no hard, has no hard edges, we wouldn't do like a vertical and a horizontal to end these windows or make them across. We're gonna do curves like the bottom of this curve, kind of like a letter C to make these windows do their thing further apart at the top and getting closer together as they go down towards the bottom. And then erasing the connectors. I'll try not to erase my road. Erase part of it, I can fix it. This is still my vanishing point right here in the middle. Is anybody starting to look like a city yet? Is there any way anybody can share theirs with me, Jennifer? Uh, yes, absolutely. If anyone wants to share yours at this point, um, you can, um, you can, um, at the lower left corner, hit the start video. Um, let me go to chat and uh, looks like Margaret is able to share. Um, if you want to just, um, probably the best bet is to put the actual drawing up to the camera and you can kind of show it that way. Um, and if you don't want to, that's okay too. Um, but we'll give it a minute, see if ever, anyone wants to. I'm not sure if... Now I might have to get off share screen, I wonder, to see it. 
Um, yes. Okay. Um, let me now let's say we wanted to do a shape that was a little bit more complex, like a hexagon or an octagon or something. I'm going to do that in this spot right here that I had already set up. So I'm going to erase it and show you. Let's see how many sides I want in this thing. Let's do one, or maybe up higher. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So there's my funky little hexagon, six sides. Now we're going to connect the closest ones to the dot that want to be going through it. Unless we want it to be a see-through thing, and that's a little bit more complex. I don't want to confuse you. But um, so I see a corner here that's close to the dot. I'm going to connect it. See a corner here that's close to the dot. I'm going to connect it. And I'm going to connect this other corner like so. And from where this is placed, I'll see a tiny another little sliver of a corner. So it just depends on where the shape is placed, how many of the sides you can see from whatever angle. Now, these corners are shaped different than this corner. This corner is like a letter L, and that's how we went down with those lines, right? And that's how we ended it, and ended it with a vertical and then a horizontal. This is almost like a letter V here. So this one's sides or windows are going to be like this. And it's going to end down here like that as well. So that's a different shape in, in three-dimensional form in our bird's eye view of a city. We can have whatever strange shapes we want to in this crazy city. Oh, I messed up there. Make these a little closer together. Okay. Now there's other things we can do with one point perspective. Is anyone interested in learning how to do a room interior, inside of a room with some simple pieces of furniture in one point perspective? Do you have any yeses? Not yet. Ha ha ha. There's you guys no, still want to work on this a couple more minutes? Um, let's see. Sounds difficult. So, well, I could, I could show it to you, and then you can decide. I can show you two step by step, just like this. Yeah. Let's, let's try it. You never know. OK, I'm going to just go to the gallery. Instead of erasing this, I'm going to save that. We'll start a new one. Okay, so to do the inside of a room interior, it's not as hard as it sounds. I'm going to take it step by step very slowly. Okay, and I'll do it at a level that I would do it for very, very beginners. Like I taught all ages of people, K through 12. So I do have an understanding of how to break it down to make it pretty simple. So if we're going to do a room interior, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw, this is a little bit different, we're going to draw a box about this size in the middle of our paper. And you could either turn your paper over or get another sheet or whatever. So this is just a regular box. Okay. The thing that's going to be different with this box is we're going to put a dot in the middle and that's going to be our vanishing point. 
this is actually going to be the back wall of our room interior. Now, how am I going to make this look like the space of the inside of a room? The first step is pretty easy. I'm going to connect this dot to this corner of the box and just make it go through to the edge of the paper. Like this. Okay, let's wait a couple minutes and let everybody see if they want to get that far. A box, a dot in the middle, a line from the dot in the middle to the edge of the paper. And we're going to do the same thing to the other corners. Make whatever's in this dot meet this corner. Go to the edge of the paper. From this dot to this corner. It has to go through the corner and go to the edge of the paper. I'm going to end up like a big X. this dot through this corner, go to the edge of the paper, and there you go. Okay, so believe it or not, that line's a little crooked, let me fix that one. One more time, Joe. Okay, eventually, this is gonna be our back wall, this is gonna be our ceiling, this is gonna be our floor, these are going to be our side walls. It might be hard to imagine it now, but once you see it'll happen, it's, it's really cool. So what we're going to erase now are the insides here, the connectors. We're going to leave the dot there, that we're going to still use that dot, but I'm just going to erase the lines inside the box. And we won't even start out with furniture first. Let's we'll start with something simple like a rug or a window on the side of the wall. That would be a lot easier. So I'm going to put an area rug down here. Now people who don't understand, this is going to be our floor. People don't understand this concept would just draw, and beginners of all ages, would just draw a rectangle right here. Oh, here's my area rug on the floor. That is incorrect. We're going to use the vanishing point once again. We're going to draw a line from the dot this way. We're going to draw a line from the dot this way, like a letter V, then a horizontal or a line across this way, and a little line across this way. I'm going to erase the connectors. This is what an area rug looked like on the floor. Put patterns on it, or whatever. So I'm going to make it just a little shorter, this area rug. Ended up a little higher. I'm going to show you a trick. Oops, wrong button. So to, so to review, all we've done here, and you can find this stuff online if you want to practice too. Um, you can re-look at the video once it's been shown, but there's also things on YouTube and stuff, how to draw them with one perspective. But to review, what we've done here is we did a regular old square, put a dot in the middle. We drew from the dot to the corner and then extended it all the way out to the edge of our paper. And repeated that in all the corners, the dot through the corner, out to the edge of the paper, the dot through the corner out to the edge of the paper, the dot through the corner out to the edge of the paper. To do our little, what is now an area rug, we just connected lines from the dot, from the dot, and across. Now, what does everybody, if you want to give me feedback, what does everybody think about just those steps so far, were those hard? Were those doable? 
for this medium? What did you think? Well, Jennifer could relate the feedback and she's still there. Doable. Yay. See, I told you. Doable. Yay. Oh, I can hear you. Good. Good. So you can talk to me. Doable. <laughs> Yay. Now, believe it or not, we're going to turn this area rug into a three dimensional structure. We're going to turn it into a bed. How are we going to do that? Watch this. So we're going to draw a line exactly up and down. Well, I got my research wand. Exactly up and down here, just a little short line. Straight up and down, like the edge of our paper, straight up and down, no slanting. Straight up and down, boom, straight up and down. Another one here, straight up and down, no slanting, straight up and down. And then another one horizontal. Okay, so now I have a mattress without a headboard. that line all straighter. We can make whatever funky kind of headboard we want up here. We can make it curved. We can make it, ooh, let's get sexy. Let's make it a heart. <laughs> and erase the stuff in between it. You go straight up and down and then across. And the legs of the bed, if you want to see those, if it's not on the floor or an air mattress or whatever, we would draw little rectangles on the end here. And if we really want to get fancy, we draw tiny little rectangles behind it here. Now you have a bed. Are people able to try that? Again, we, all we have is our area rod to the point, to the point, across, across. Yes. Then we added a vertical here and a vertical here. Then we went across again. Do the same thing up here, though you don't have to do that up here. You can make this a fancier headboard. You can make it all kinds of crazy. Little rectangle here, a rectangle here, and smaller ones here and here. And that's, a, you're facing a bed as you're looking into a room. You could put pillows on the bed. Some people have all kinds of pillows on the bed. Here, make a three dimensional, put another edge to that pillow. It's like fried eggs, doesn't it? <laughs> you got a fried eggs pillows. You could put a comforter edge that's hanging over the bed, like it's going down on the corner, like this. There's a comforter on the bed. You can make it all kinds of pretty lace down here. And here, my mother, Grandmother used to crochet afghans like a lot of people did. We can make all little afghan sections. We could go crazy with detail if we wanted to. Draw a stick person laying on the bed. <laughs> what kinds of stuff you can do? What if he wants to do like a window or a picture or a painting on the side wall? Again, a beginner would just draw a rectangle. And that doesn't look right. I mean, it might look right to you if you're a beginner, but it's just, it's not right. Instead, what we would do was once again, we put our pencil and ruler on the dot, draw a line out from the dot this way, like a letter V is a victory, out from the dot this way. A vertical here, a vertical here. Now this can be all kinds of things on the wall. Okay, we will erase our connectors. I can show you in a minute what kinds of things we can make this into. But, so we did like a letter V out from the point again. Vertical, vertical. Now we're gonna erase. Okay, so you could just leave it like that if you wanted to. Or we could pretend we're really wealthy. We could make it a sunk in wall aquarium. We could put fish in it. I'm being silly fish, but whatever. Or we could 
make it, let me erase that. A poster or a painting, or we could make it a window. We could put a vertical line here, straight up and down in the middle. This line has to go from the vanishing point. We would erase the connector. Say you want a scalloped valance on it. We'd make a guideline from the vanishing point. Then do the scalloped edge like this. So those are a couple of the easy things you can do for a room interior. You can make that same shape on this side and make it another window or something else. You can make um, a skylight on the window by, I mean on the window, on the ceiling by starting with the letter V again, and then across, across, make it into a skylight. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. What was that last thing you said? Oh, the last thing, if you want to do the same shape on the ceiling, it could be like a skylight. Letter V from the point, across, across, erase the connectors. I'm going to put a moon and some stars up there. And now have a skylight. Thank the you. Ceiling. Uh huh. And then we could make a shape out here, like a letter V on this side. Vertical, vertical. Erase the connectors. And we can make this into whatever you wanted to. We could put shelves on it from the vanishing point, and it, we could have a bar in our bedroom. Oh my. Ha uh -huh. okay, erase the connectors. Or it could be a painting. Or another window. Might put a ledge on this one from the vanishing point and maybe the backside of a kitty cat hanging out in window. The silhouette of one would be easier. Tails, I got down. Well, cats in the window. Now I'm gonna show you something a little bit more complex. If you don't wanna do this part, that's fine. But it, it, it's cool to learn and something you can look up online and practice. So let's say I want you to do something like a dresser or something over here. Remember those blocks of a city thing we just did? It's the exact same method, but it's gonna look weird to you because we're like on the side of a room or at least your brain is reading that's the side of a room because of the space we made. So the first step of this dresser is I'm going to do a straight up and down skinny rectangle like this. Half of it's on the floor and half of it's on the side wall. Then I'm going to connect the three closest lines of this structure to the vanishing point. I need to make that straighter. That's my kitty talking back there. Hi, kitty. So this is just like the building we did. So we put half of the rectangle here and half of it down there. So we have some on the floor and some on the against the wall. Now to end the structure, I'm going to edit just like I did the buildings that had corners. It's across here, 
So I'm going to go across here. And it's up and down here. So I'm going to go up and down here. I'm going to erase the lines that go through it because this dresser is not going through the wall and the ceiling. It's it's a 3D structure on the or wall and side wall and the floor rather, not ceiling. So here is part of a dresser in the room. This is like the vanity top of it. This is where the drawers will go. That's the side of it. If we want to make drawers, what we'll do is we'll draw a line from the dot through it like this. So it's at the correct angle and another one like this. So it's like a letter V almost again, skinnier here and gets wider there. Put little knobs. There's a very simple dresser. We can erase the guidelines. What if we wanted a mirror on the back of that dresser? What we would do is we will go up from this corner and we'll make our mirror in front of this window or painting. We go up from this corner. And we go from the vanishing point, whatever angle that takes us. I'm going to erase what's above, around, and through. And there's another aspect of our dresser. It could be a mirror if we wanted it to. Is anybody going to try that? Is that too complex? Any yeses on the dresser? Trying it. That's okay. It's okay if you don't get it right the first time. It takes practice. It took me practice. My teacher tried to show me that the first time. I was like, what the heck? I was really at drawing people and faces. And if you want some instruction on that, you know, I could do that too. That's another thing. We should take a survey and see who would like to learn what. And I could do classes that are student directed, not just teacher directed. I could teach you things that you may want to learn. If it's okay, I'm gonna remove my phone from the station and I'm gonna pan it around my studio to show you some different works that I've done. I'll give you an idea that we don't just have to do things like that. You'd like to learn how to draw flowers. Awesome, I could do that. So, there's an oil painting that I did. My daughter when she was little. These two pieces are not mine. That's another artist that I love. He's awesome. There's a cat I drew, or cat in high school, uh, for my parents. There's a frog painting I'm working on. I haven't gotten that far. He's on some hostel leaves. Um, a silly caricature did, I did of a coworker. A couple of those, just quickies. So there are all kinds of things that we can do. And yes, we can do flowers. Um, what we would do, whoops, I'm sorry, get back here. Okay, cool. And you're good to go. Awesome. I'd like to do flowers and people. Flowers and people are lovely. And you know what, I suggest we start with flowers that might be a little easier um, to start with. What types of flowers are you interested in? Just any kind? Tulips, pansies? Something with real defined shapes for me at first, like a tulip, you know. Okay. Or a rose or, or a pansy would be good, petunia. Mm -hmm. Petunia, things like that. Is anybody else interested in flowers? Other yeses. Okay, I'm going to look up an image just for heck of it. We have like a half hour left here. Um, 
get rid of that. I'm gonna look up the image of a tool over to Petunia or something and show you the basics of how to dissect that image into shapes as you're looking at it. So it's less um, naive looking and more lifelike looking. Yeah, someone else said they would like to do the flowers if it's easy. Yeah, yeah, flowers are simple. So, here are some, oops, <laughs> here's some images of tulips I have up here. Nice. Now, can you see my other screen here too still? <clears throat> I can show you step by step how to do some simple tulips. Get rid of this thing first. You are now sideways. I don't know if anybody else is experiencing that. Hmm. Oh, yes. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to look at some images. So I'll show you like a beginner's tulip and more advanced tools. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with naive drawing. It's fun. Kids draw. We encourage it. It's good for their motor skills. It's good for their imagination. It's good for expression. You know, it's good for a lot of things. But if we want to learn to go past that, and that's our goal, I'll we'll show you like before and after. So most people, when they draw a tulip, when they're starting out, <clears throat> they will draw something. Let's pick up a pink. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, we'll do something like this. Right? Can you see that? Now I show on my phone, my screen is little, really little. Is it big for everybody else? Can you all see? It's pretty little. Yeah. How can we make us big again, Jennifer? I think we need to share my screen again, however you did that before. Hold on. Tool looks like, right? Okay. We're going to do one that is a little bit more realistic of a tulip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a photograph of a tulip. Let me get rid of this. Start a new one. And I'm going to try to do the shapes as opposed to just what my mind thinks a tulip would look like. So a tulip is formed in kind of like, I would say like a cup like around the bottom, right? But the shapes above aren't really like this. Again, that's a, a kitty version or a beginner drawer's version. They're a lot more softer and delicate. The shapes are actually rounded, the petals are. So I'm gonna divide it down here. And I'm gonna draw a curved, soft shape and the shape can be irregular they don't have to be perfectly formed because tools are like that they're delicate and they have places where they go in and out and i'll draw something kind of like that on the other side i would never be exactly symmetrical but can you raise your like palette i can't see it it's too low too low okay that's better. Oops. Okay. So we started out with a couple of side petals of our tulips. Then there's going to be like a center one. And again, it's, it's not angular. It's soft. It's rounded. It's not regular. And then behind it are a couple more petals. And this, the stem comes in from the center. And then the leaves are, are tall and pointed. Even they aren't like 
totally rectilinear point to them because they're from nature. So they have curved edges to them as well. Curve. Like that. Now with those steps, does that make drawing a tulip a little easier for anyone? Have you tried it with the demo? <laughs> Yay. And then if we want to put color in there, think in terms of dark and light with color. And things that are hidden inside tend to be darker than edges are on the outside. For example, I'm going to put this technique to painting here. This could be true with crayons or colored pencils or anything, though. But when you're doing something that has depth, that has three-dimensionality three -dimensionality to it, Whatever is inside, say there's some of this petal is in here, this edge of it is going to be darker than what's on the outside. This edge of it is going to be lighter because it's in front. And as that part goes a little toward the light, it'll be lighter. Now these parts back here are behind even further still. So I would make those darker. How do I make it darker? If, depending on what medium I'm working on, if it's colored pencil or pencil or crayon, I press down harder. I'm not gonna get into color theory right now because that would be a little bit too much for you. I think that'd be a little confusing. But um, so that gives it depth. And then we can see more of the layers of the tulip. It doesn't look flat anymore. In my photograph, it shows parts of it are a little darker down here. It's what really helps is to have a good reference, whether it's the live tulip or a really good photograph, we can see different colors and layers of it, different darks and lights. It helps a lot. Mind this a little bit more here. So see, that is a little bit more tulip-like than this. And it's, it's, it's studying. Anything that you're drawing, basically what drawing is, is the ability to see. And that takes, some people say, oh, that comes naturally. Not necessarily. Some people have it a little bit more of ability than others starting out. But honestly, it is a practice skill. You can, I'm better at drawing people because I was obsessed with drawing people's faces ever since I was young and animals and plants. Wasn't too into mechanical things. So if I'm drawing a mechanical thing like a car or a motorcycle or a machine, I really have to study it and pay close, close attention to it like I'm learning it for the first time. Because that didn't interest me as a child, so I wasn't drawing this thing. I was drawing more organic things. And even if you don't consider yourself an artist, actually, you can train yourself to see. And you draw something sometimes and you walk away and then come back and look at it again. And then you can see your mistakes. Just like when you were a kid and you had to write a paper, edit it. It's like, that doesn't sound right. Walk away and come back and then you get, oh, that sounds right. Same thing with the stem. Think of things in terms of darks and lights, never just anything flat. Flat art is cool too, but again, it depends on what your effect is. If you're doing flat colors and design work, that's different. If you want a flower to look like a flower, you concentrate on the shapes 
the sizes of the shapes in darks and lights. Like these shapes are similar, but they're different sizes, they're organic. So getting back to the stem, I'm gonna make it a darker green where it connects. And then I'm gonna make it lighter as it goes down. And if this part of this leaf is behind the stem, I'm gonna make it darker. A silly little trick I taught students when I was teaching younger grades, it would be innies are dark, outies are light, just like belly buttons. So things that are further away from you or go in have a shadow cast, things that come out show more light as they come closer to you. So even within a green leaf, there are darks and lights within it. And again, if you're just working in black and white right now, you can just shade those things. You know, you can make a darker shadow by shading with your pencil in here, keeping it a little bit darker in here. Fading out to a medium tone here by pressing down, not quite as hard, and fading out till you almost disappear. So if I was doing a black and white version of this tool, I could just do that right on top, actually. I would start out with a darker black here, and fade out to gray, etc. Of course, different flowers have different shapes. So you approach them by dissecting what the shapes look like to you. Try to connect familiar with the unfamiliar. Like when I said, um, drawing those lines from the point that looked like a letter V to me. When you're looking at a flower, I, I, I said this looked like, this part of it reminded me of a cup. See what connections you can make with what you see, with something you already know, what it reminds you of, and then it's easier to draw it as well. I have here 320. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, we are getting close to time being finished. Um, Maybe after this is over, we could do some kind of survey or whatever about things you would like to draw or learn how to draw, and we could do more. Be very specific. Um, we could divide the lesson into quarters or sections or whatever. Like we could have 10 minutes to flowers and 20 minutes to a dog, or we could do an entire lesson on one thing and then the other, you know. So I want you guys to be excited. I want you to be into it. This is for you. And it's not only good for you to keep your mind off of everything being stuck inside, it's good for me too. It's good for all of us. Mm -hmm. It gives me purpose too. Yeah, that's great, Joni. Thank you very much. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording portion now. So thank you everyone for participating.